Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb. My name is Keo and today we are going to be doing something brand new. I'm joined here today by Peter. Hi. And by Ralph. Hey. And uh, we're here playing with our fancy uh, multicam system. Uh, we're all in the same room, which is unusual these days for, for recording like this. Um, and this is the first time we're actually oh. running the system. Um, with a bunch of people here. So if you see my hand is down here in front and I'm actually switching the buttons over who's being shown on camera. They are about, what, you're about three meters yeah, away from me, so. four meters, and you and Peter are about two meters away as well. Yeah, I'm about four meters away from Peter. And this is all done through the magic of, uh, through the magic of video, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we, we are all in the same room, so that's pretty cool. All right, so what are we doing today? Um, I just thought we'd sit down and talk about the Justice League, the Snyder, uh, well, what's the correct name for it? It's Zack Snyder's, Snyder's The Justice League, right? Yeah. Otherwise known as The Snyder Cut. Yeah, there's no uh, the. Zack Snyder's Justice League. What's that? Oh. It's Zack Snyder's Justice League. So it's yeah. just Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that this would be a nice format to do moving forward. And uh, I, I don't have a name for it. What I'm thinking of calling it is something like um, Things We Watch or T-Dubs. Right, so so it's like T dubs stuff that we watch throughout. Um, just while we're at Honeycomb, because we actually watch a lot of stuff, right? Yep. Um, over over the over the days that we're here, we mm -hmm. we we spend a lot of time learning and trying to study stuff, and we also spend a lot of time watching entertainment mm -hmm. as well. And it's part of our job, honestly, just to be in touch with culture. Now, on that note, we do have to do a little bit of disclosure. Um, myself here in Honeycomb and Ralph over here. So we've both worked for uh, Turner Media mm -hmm. and what is now Warner Media. We're mm -hmm. both uh, registered suppliers yep. of that organization because we run a uh, event where I'm a producer. Uh, Ralph is a supplier yep. with what's your company? Archery Attack. Archery Attack. Yep. And Honeycomb produces an event, uh, which is like an open comic convention called Pop Expo. Yep. And at Pop Expo, uh, we are on the payroll of warner media um so i mean this is just disclosure they're not paying us for this recording um we are not hired in any way it's just something we're interested in like we do that event because we are interested in in uh superman and batman and the yeah. justice league and flash and all that stuff um but they have no editorial review but we do think it is important that you guys know that they are on the client list of honeycomb uh, honeycomb Arts in particular. It's a Honeycomb Arts event. So just with a grain of salt, just so that you guys know, that said, it will not affect our opinions or our review. Uh -huh. I, I kind of did not like the original um, Justice League. Mm -hmm. I think that's a general sentiment <laughs> anyway. Um, we are going to talk about this. And in general, I expect these discussions to be completely spoilery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we are just going to go ahead and talk about all of these things as if um, everybody in the room has seen it. And in this case, everyone in the room has seen it. Yeah. We did a screening uh, last night yeah. as soon as it came out. And yeah, so let's just start out with uh, initial thoughts. Uh, what did you guys think of the movie as a whole? Is it a good movie, period? Um, yeah, so what are your thoughts? Let's start with you, Peter. Mm. Okay, so I walked into uh, just Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, I wasn't expecting too much. Mm-hmm. Like, I already knew that uh, Zack's gonna make some adjustments to the uh, previous movie, and I wasn't expecting a masterpiece at all. I didn't walk in there expecting uh, it's gonna be a groundbreaking movie by any means, no. I just wanna see his vision done justice. And I think what he wanted to express was good. And he was able to do it well, with some reservations. How about you, Ralph? What do you think? I think overall, so so it's hard to assess this movie without looking at the old movie, right? Just because it is basically a rehash or you know a full extended version of what his original plan was, and that's why John Whedon's cut is called the controversial cut. Joss, Joss Whedon. Joss. Oh, okay, that's why it's called the controversial cut now, right? So it's hard, but overall, if this was the first thing we saw first time around four years ago now, four years, yeah, twenty seventeen, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it would have been a great movie. I would think it was a good 
climax or the great build up to what the DC universe four, could be. Four hours long, it would still be a, a great. So movie. I think it's only four. Hours. So that's the other thing. It's like the, the the problem is we're looking at it, and we're given the luxury of reviewing this movie and watching it at home instead of at a theater. Which takes away some points, but also gives it some points because now, well, people are used to binge watching shows now. Like people sit down and watch, you know, Money Heist for like my dad's watch like eight episodes of Money Heist but straight. I'm pretty sure you can't do that in a cinema. I think like I think that's a harder format because you're watching with a lot of other people in a normal setting, right? And you know, people standing up, needing to leave to to pee, is a big issue if you're doing that. So I don't think a four hour format would work in most movies, right? You'd have to take a 10 minute break after the 2 hour mark right so it's still a good movie for me it's a good movie it could have, it should have been the thing that came out in the first place maybe if it came out like this in the first place it wouldn't need to be 4 hours right he could have done it better without trying to make readjustments to things that was already presented to it in a vacuum though in a vacuum peter first is mm. it a good movie just in a vacuum it- if you had never seen the previous one what would this be uh, yes, it's a good movie. It's a great one. I love it. For me, I think, okay, 7 out of 5. 7 out of Sorry, 5. Sorry, 7.5 wow. out of 10. 100, 150%. <laughs> so, no, 7.5 out of 10. For, for me, this goes all the way back to Mass Effect. Um, Mass Effect 3, right? Where they rewrote the story based on, uh, based on like how critical, not critical, how the fan reaction was, right? And I feel like I'm kind of against that. Um, I I do support the idea that a creator should have their own say on you know on how something is done. That said, one of my favorite um, little bits of uh, what do you call that uh, DVD extras ever was in The Incredibles, where John Lasseter and Brad Bird were fighting over the 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 movie, mm-hmm. and uh, John Lasseter was saying, "Hey, I'm just trying to get us to the finish line." And Brad Bird says, no, I'm trying to get us to the finish line in first place. Mm. Um, and that that dynamic, I think, is really important, right? Yeah. Like, you need the pressure of your producer and your studio to make sure that this thing actually gets done. Mm-hmm. But then you need the artistic push of the director to make sure that it's done well, mm. right? And somewhere in the, in the mix, we lost both. Yeah. Mm. In, with the original Justice League. Now, uh, judging this, and now it's kind of cheating because I asked you guys to say in a vacuum, but it's it's pretty it's impossible, impossible to say in a vacuum. Like, we will always see this movie in, in the light way. of the previous mm-hmm. one, right? Uh, seeing Even seeing what's missing, because there are some scenes that are missing and some great scenes that are missing, to be completely honest, right? That There could have been a situation where... Um, where there was some collaboration. And to be fair, I think it, it's good that that Snyder didn't use any of, or to the best of our knowledge, any of the shots that, that Whedon had added in later mm. um, to be true to his own design. That said, it's also cheating because Zack Snyder recut this thing after knowing basically the world's largest um, focus group, mm. right? The early screening. And after um, and after watching Avengers, mm. right? Because yeah, Endgame right. came out, and that's kind of changed the way that that superhero movies are done and perceived. Mm-hmm. I think. Would I you guys think. know like how far before Zach got fired the first time around? So Zach did not get fired he from left. the original. He, he left. left. Oh, Unfortunately, he, left. he had a family uh, tragedy. Oh. Um, okay, for those who don't know, because everyone yeah. just says family tragedy, but mm. my understanding is that he had a child who uh, committed suicide. Yes. Mm. Right? Um, she, she, right? Autumn, yeah. Yeah, she took her own life. And that's oh. why at the end of the movie it says for Autumn. It's done for I was going to look that up. Did I not know? Okay. Peter, yeah. you know more about that story? Uh, yeah. Uh, Zach, in the middle of, uh, in the middle of creating uh, Justice League, he and his wife, who was producing mm-hmm. the movie, both left yeah. to grieve for their daughter. And that's where Joss was taken in. It was originally supposed to be a four-hour four movie. So it was originally designed to be a four-hour yes. movie. Yes. Uh. So most of the shots that were added in, uh, that the Zack Snyder's Justice League has, has already been shot by Zack, but shelved by Joss. So at the end of the day, it's an editing thing. Yes. Like, 
Josh came in and re-edited out everything that he didn't want and then and then put sure, in new, new scenes, scenes new scenes to add the Whedon flavor to the movie mm. yeah that's the thing is that you see a lot of the stuff that a lot of the light-hearted stuff mm-hmm. is gone from this film yeah mm. right for better or worse like there's that one of my favorite scenes from the original one which I don't have a lot of like if you ask me to rate the previous movie on a scale of 1 to 10 I'd probably give it like a 3 mm. And mm-hmm. this one, I'd probably give a six or seven mm-hmm. um, in a vacuum, right? But one of the things that kept me from making that movie like a flat-out one, <laughs> right? Or a two, uh, the original movie, I should say, was, you know, little scenes like uh, like where Aquaman sits down on the, on, the, on the lasso of truth. Ah, that's right. You guys remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so he sits down on the lasso of truth. He's talking to... Dan I think yeah. and then he's basically saying all the stuff that he really wouldn't say of course right yep. very candidly um, and that's gone mm-hmm. and a lot of the scenes that are like that are gone that said and now we're really getting to like super spoilery territory mm-hmm. I'm really happy that they removed that family living in our little mock Chernobyl yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that rescue scene in the middle of uh, in the end sequence essentially well there's a lot of Joss Whedon retconning the Snyder verse Mm-hmm. As a whole, where uh, Snyder uh, Snyder allowed for Man of Steel to be a very very um, traumatizing movie. Like, how would you characterize Man of Steel? I like Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. I have a few uh, reservations about Batman versus Superman, but judging by the themes, I like Batman versus Superman's theme overarching theme better than man of steel all right i'm on the opposite side i'm like, actually on the opposite I, as well i l- like man of steel but i thought that man of steel was um was way too hopeless i yeah. guess for a superman movie and i feel like uh zach snyder kind of missed the the point of superman um, which is still a gripe that I carry into this mm-hmm. into this movie, uh, and then BVS I just could not stand. Like I watched it once and I never watched it again. Mm-hmm. Like and the, and that's saying a lot because I tend to rewatch these movies a lot. But again, the one thing the one thing that I liked about Batman vs Superman is the theme between treating treating Superman as a god and Batman as the devil. That theme was great, but the execution. That's where it was lacking. But I like what they wanted to do with it. I like that. I do like that. But this is my ultimate gripe. And it, it continues through this movie. Although I think Superman was handled a lot better in this movie. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I don't like that Superman is a deus ex machina. Because he, that's not who he is. Mm. Like, uh, Snyder vs. Superman uh, is an asshole. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a jerk. The only thing he cares about is... Lois Lane, Mm -hmm. right? And protecting his home. Mm -hmm. And it's not this general, you know, truth, justice, and, you know, uh, the American way, for lack of a better, you know. The the, the writers who wrote it are American. So that's the, that's a, those are the themes that have carried through Superman throughout all the years. And what we have here is what is essentially um, the, the video game version, right? The injustice slightly you know evil superman yeah but even in justice he came from a place of hope and like his world crashed down on him right that's the essential point of injustice wherein he finally snapped but and that's the thing like the reason why i'm okay with the uh dawn of justice right that's the title of the second one man of steel no no man of steel and then dawn of justice B- bvs right yeah dawn of justice yeah yeah, BVS, yeah. yeah so is that man of steel sets it up that batman is an asshole I'm sorry, Superman is an asshole. But the thing is, by the time that both at the end of BVS and this, how come Batman's now the guy that w- with all of the hope? When he has no... His basis of hope is supposed to be Superman, who's an asshole. How does that work out? You gotta remember that da- <laughs> that Dan Martha scene. <laughs> Unfortunately, because uh, they set it up that Batman saw that Superman had some humanity in him because Superman cared about his mom. It's not just about that, uh, that they have the same names uh, like Martha, but that's how they wanted to show it. 
that so, so Superman you're, has you're this. saying that that's that Martha, the Martha scene is the entrance of hum of uh, Superman's Superman. humanity. Yes, and that was what Batman realized that Superman is not just this alien that came here and was an asshole, even though he actually is an asshole, but every human is an asshole. But that's how when that's how Batman realized that Superman has some humanity in him. You're telling me a single moment of humanity propels Batman to try to save the world. That's what the movie showed. So, but that's my that's my entire issue. It's like there's no reason right now. As, again, ba- Superman does save the world, but does he really? <laughs> does he really inspire that kind of hope that we've known him to be from the comics and earlier movies? This is one of the things that I, that the, my main issue with 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 Superman's portrayal in by Zack Snyder is mm-hmm. that he's kind of this um, like we we just need to push this button and we'll win. Right, we just need to flip this lever, and we'll win. Mm. Right? Um, what would be a good example? Oh, um, we need to fly down the trench in Star Wars, and as long as we hit this hole with a torpedo, the whole thing's gonna blow up. Yeah. Right? And this has been the criticism of, of Star Wars for decades. Right? Mm-hmm. Which they kind of retroactively fixed through Rogue One, which mm-hmm. is great. Which was great. Which was great. Um, but here, what you basically have is. The superheroes uniting to figure it out, and the thing that they figure out is that they need to bring Superman back because they need they need their switch to win. And Superman, I feel like, is worth so much more than that. Like all we get here is like, oh, we, you know, they they kind of fix it a bit. You have this extended scene in in um, in Smallville, right, where where we get to see Diane Lane again, um, and. In that scene, he, he wrestles a little bit with that humanity, right? And he explains it to his mom and to Lois. Um, but still, like, you know, uh, th- the world mourns for Superman in this movie, not as, as egregiously as he did in the, as they did in the Joss Whedon version. Mm-hmm. But, I like, why? Yeah. Like, why? Like, if you ask me, from what I have seen Superman do in Superman movies... You know, in the Snyder universe, Snooper, uh, Superman isn't that good a guy. He's broken a bunch of buildings. He's had a bunch of fights in in residential areas. Like he's like, why does the world love him? Why we haven't seen any reason for the world to love this guy? And at the core of like why, like the reason why Doomsday exists, right, in this universe, isn't as clear as. What happens in the comics? What happens in everywhere else? Where Lex Luthor isn't isn't just trying to stop Superman as a backup plan, but there's an actual jealousy and malice towards the status Superman has over Lex in the world, and that's why that's why Doomsday came to existence, right? But here is like okay, there's a guy that can beat everything on Earth, so let's just try to beat him. So that's it. So there, there's a guy who's basically he's a nuclear option. Superman is the nuclear option. Mm. Right, and what they're saying is like, at some if he if he may be a threat, we must treat him as a threat. Right. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Like, it, it, I feel like this is something that movies have solved decades ago when Rocky takes care of a dog. Like you remember that Rocky saves a dog mm-hmm. for seemingly no reason other than to let us know that Rocky is a good guy, mm. and we don't get any of that. We still don't get any of that for Superman. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, like how much better would it be I mean they bothered to put him in the black suit in this movie right but wouldn't it have been great if he was in the black suit and something was wrong you know like like in the comics he couldn't fly he, he couldn't do something right and like that kind of needed uh, kind of uh, required him to need a team yeah because what basically happened in this movie is that yeah, he's a god <laughs> he's a god Right, doesn't really need a team, except that cyborg is is kind of the yeah the the main hinge here, which brings us into alternate subplots. So, what did you think, Peter, of uh, of the development arcs of of the other characters in this movie that are not Batman or Superman? At least they're given more respect here, and uh, cyborg and Flash. The extension of their storyline here was a lot better than. Uh, than the than the Justice League movie. Uh, I like what they did with Cyborg, 
which is basically Superman 2.0. So it's like computer Superman. Yeah, I mean, mm. they showed that uh, they showed uh, his dad telling him that he has this great power, and it falls on him to use that power responsibly, which is basically what Superman's arc was supposed to be about. Yeah, because the original the original Justice League really had Cyborg as some sort of Frankenstein, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Frankenstein's monster. He didn't have a purpose. He didn't feel like he had a purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, but like playing out the father-son story here really uh, added to the movie. And I really yep. think like looking at this movie, uh, that's really what, what, you know, the element that was removed that never should have been removed. It should have always been the Cyborg movie. Mm. And this right? is why Cyborg's actor probably hated Warner Brothers for he was very hurt about what happened during the previous Justice League. I, I heard about this one. Mm. What, what happened there? Cyborg had a lot of development and a lot of. Yeah. Uh, you heard those reports before that he that he felt this way, but at some point you're like, hey, you're you're in a blockbuster movie, like, yeah, at first you're, you're, just... you're not a big actor or anything, like yeah. you're, you got this role. What are you so pissed about? Like mm. you didn't do anything in the movie, and it turns out. He did do a yeah. lot of stuff in the movie, and we, it, just we, didn't see it. we just never see it. Yeah. How about uh, Flash? You're the big Flash guy. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, and this goes into the overarching story of like the he- how the heroes are playing out in Justice League, and like the Flash, Cyborg, and Superman are a bit too OP. Like they're just gods in their own right. Like we see immediately in throughout the movie that Flash can stop time, which is fine. But I stand. Wait, which scene do we see him stop? No, oh, the additional so, scene with the uh, with the hot dogs. Yeah, with the hot dogs and saving the girl, right? Yeah. And this is a new scene that's added in about uh, what twenty five percent into the yeah, like twenty five minutes. Like 25 first introduction, percent. yeah, first introduction. So it's of like an Flash. hour into the movie. Yeah, 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 it's like an hour into the movie, and then uh, so basically, Flash is trying to get or Barry Allen yeah. is trying to get a job as a dog in, walker. <laughs> yeah, as a dog walker in a. What seems to be like some sort of pet store, right? And uh, while this is happening, he looks out the window and he sees this girl Mm -hmm. and he and the girl like make eye contact. Mm. This little moment where he where he makes eye contact with the girl is about to uh, the girl's going to die because of it. Yeah. Essentially. Right. (laughs) So there's a car accident and everything slows down and he saves the girl. Yeah. Uh, But kind of no one else. Like, <laughs> Dude, I don't think anyone was in danger elsewise, to be okay. fair, to All be right. fair. So that's fine. But again, that's the thing. So for me, I stand that Flash should have his had his own movie. Uh, Cyborg's introduction into this movie and how he uh, becomes a pivotal point, part of how the world is saved, is important. But Flash, in discovering both him and his powers, that we have no context, that, oh, there's just a speedster that exists that can tap into the full power of Speed Force at 20 years old, whatever his current age in the movie is, is kind of crazy that he just gets dropped in. And if you think about it, he can just do anything he wants. If anyone who's read the comics know that there are consequences for doing that. Actually, even if you watch the CW, the, the WV shows of mm, The Flash, yeah. there are consequences for mucking with the Speed Force. Yeah, in time, right? Right. I, I, I've seen all of the seasons except for the last the Same. most recent season of of the flash and uh, i probably only watched all of the flash and arrow actually no i've seen everything except for all of supergirl um which brings us to martian manhunter mm. ah. uh ralph right. what did you think of the portrayal and usage of of martian manhunter in in zack snyder's the Justice League. I think it's underutilized, right? Like, they sh- he shows up halfway through, takes over the scene between uh, John uh, John Jones assumes Martha and then talks to Lois Lane. But there's no context for why that happened in the first place. There's no understanding. Like, he f- figures out, she figures out that Clark Kent is Superman through probably that conversation, right? Well, there, there's also a little bit of a... There's, what do you mean? You mean John Jones figures it out? Yeah, so that's a question as well. We have no context of who he is in the current universe. And then does he just show up as someone trying to figure out who the heroes and the bad guys are? There was a moment where we saw him transform and 
there's a split second where mm-hmm. we thought it was the same actor as in Supergirl. Yeah. Which would have been a kind of a crazy crossover. And I'm mm-hmm. very happy that that did not happen. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So assuming he takes on the usual character as a general in the U.S. Army, then it makes sense to a degree. But yeah, like why did he show up? I guess obviously it's a setup for the next movie some way, somehow. And then he shows up in the end of the film. Yeah, again, as, as the, talking to Batman. So, so this is a, another one of those like um, Captain Marvel on the other side of the universe questions. Like, where mm-hmm. were you this whole time? Or Wonder yeah. Woman. Like, you have Wonder Woman. Uh, you have the original Wonder Woman. And then you have Wonder Woman 1984. And you really have to ask, like, where were you this whole time? Mm-hmm. And the same question has to be asked for... John Jones, like your superpower, your superhero. Where were you when Steppenwolf showed up and the world was about to, the universe is about to end? How do you think that that, that will like, be resolved? Well, so to be fair, like every superhero movie is like that, right? Even we even see in Aquaman, we see it even in the Marvel movies. Is that people, you know, uh, the protagonists of the movie get their own thing with no intervention of the other heroes. Very little we see is like, like maybe in Spider Man, where in Iron Man shows up in Homecoming, right? But everywhere else is, in theory, Iron Man should be literally in every thing that happens on Earth in any Marvel movie just because he has what he has as Tony Stark. But they don't show up. He doesn't show up in all of that. So I guess that's fine. But he does agree. show up for a good amount. Like, look at, like, WandaVision, mm, right? There, there are... Uh, but that's know, after. Minor, minor spoilers yeah. for, for WandaVision. There are... There, you know, the Stark name does show up mm. there. Like you do get the feeling that this is the same universe and it is pervasive. Like mm. his presence in this universe is pervasive. Now, talking about Wandavision, I thought that that was a really good example of how a story that should be longer can be done in an episodic exactly. form. In fact, Wandavision, I would argue, would not work as a movie. It, would not. it needs to be an episodic TV show because of the 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 creative choices that they made. Now it's a chicken and the egg kind of thing where maybe they made these choices because it was a TV show. Um, but I think that it serves a lot better for it to be a TV show with Barry Allen. Would you have wanted a flash movie or would you rather like a six part really in depth? That would be cool. Show? Like either way, I think the introduction of flash was a bit too abrupt or I we we obviously see at the end near the the, the uh, final fight scene is that Flash saved the world by going back a few seconds to stop the unity from happening. Spoiler, but there's no context that he can just do that. There's no context of how he necessarily de- either not develop the power. But... They, they 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 left breadcrumbs early in the film. He said yes. a few things and then time moves backwards just a little bit. Like he he does it. He he specifically the the cube goes into the water. Yeah. Right? Goes in it's not water, it's whatever fluid. <laughs> fluid, right? It goes into the fluid and then because he's missed the moment, he dials it back. Yeah, a split like second. Like a split second yeah. so that he can fire it up. That right? is true. And he also mentioned something about mucking with time. He already he did, knows he that did. he can muck with time both ways. So it's, it's just a matter of deciding if he's going to do it at the moment or not. So that's a good question into how do we perceive the the Snyderverse of DC is is every, do you assume that everyone understands the heroes that are being introduced beforehand and that they were just taking it at a different lens every time? I, I would say that yes, we understand them and that's why I'm pissed off because like That's right. The ba- because the, bat because the expectations Batman, are different. Yeah, but uh, well, I could say that that is pretty much Batman. Mm-hmm. Um and then uh, but Superman is nothing like Superman should be. I mean, like I, I actually like the current Superman and Lois um, mm-hmm. show, uh, where you see Superman later on in life as a family man, and um, he he's dealing with very human problems. And in the past, it's only really been the connection to Lois Lane that that brings humanity to to Superman. Right, this dichotomy of like having to solve this uh, his secret identity, right? Um, and in in that portrayal, you really feel the humanity of the situation that he can't be everywhere at one yeah. time. But in Snyderverse, he can pretty much be anywhere he wants, anything he wants, at the same time. So you had issues with 
the um, with the portrayal of Superman being able to do the same stuff that Flash does. Yeah, I had a very big issue with like the first fight scene that they introduced is like Superman can just catch Flash. Well, he's slower. He's slower than Flash in that scene. Yeah, he is. No, I mean, no, Flash beats him, quote unquote, by not getting I know. But so a couple of things, right? Is like one, we're treating Superman as unbeatable. But we have to also remember he's an alien, just an alien compared to like Kryptonians got blown up, right? If they were gods in their own right, with just a different sun, then going them going to any other galaxy would mean that they would be unstoppable. Yeah, he's, at any he's given just point. super here. He's just super here. So, but why is he? Why? Why? And also, Steppenwolf is given like a monster-like appearance. Although in the comics, most of Darkseid's elite are just human-like with extraordinary powers, right? And immortal for the most part because they're gods from Acropolis or. In, New Genesis. Anyway, but why can't he beat Superman when Steve Steppenwolf is an actual god from Acropolis versus him just an alien superpowered by the sun? Right. Well, the the argument is that Superman is kind of a god in his own right, right? Like he, they're, what they're saying is that um, this thing that happened, we see an extended sequence of the Green Lanterns and more Zeus and Ares. Mm-hmm. That was really good. That that battle sequence. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's very cool to see it extended, although CG is not so good in in this film. But, you know, you, you see it as a director's cut. So I'll forgive that one. Yeah. I, I'll I, forgive that one. It's just so weird. Like, I mean, I understand that Superman is supposed to be super strong and everything. But in the in this universe, it, it seems that there's no thrill of being a hero. Like, the point of Superman now is convincing him to fight for good or fight for the Earth rather than not kill the earth <laughs> just because he can. We basically see three characters in this in this film all um, exercise their super speed. Mm-hmm. You got Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. you got Superman, then you have the Flash. They do make a point to show that Flash can do things that the other two can't. Mm-hmm. So this thing where Flash and Superman uh, get into it right after the resurrection scene, um, I think that from a from a regular viewer point of view, all we're seeing is um, Formula One, right? One car is a one car is a Mercedes Benz, and the other one is a uh, I don't know what the current reference is Minardi back in the day. Uh, who's Aston a slow Martin car now? Martin or Red Bull would be yeah, nice. like they're both really fast, right? One is super fast, but the other one is not out of the game. I don't know it's just it's just like that's the, that's the thing with Justice League, right? I mean, going back to are we assuming things from comics or things from the lore of these heroes to be true or not? Just the point of Justice League was that Superman originally can't beat the aliens that were invading Earth. That's why he formed the Justice League with Batman, right? That was the original reasoning. So I, it's hard to I hard think we to should decide. Uh, I think we should uh, like accept that the Snyderverse is a whole separate universe from the comic books. And from any other uh, Justice League media in particular, like we should look at it at a separate lens. No, in that's it, fine. In its own vacuum. Yeah, I, 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 its I its totally vacuum. agree with that. But the introduction of these characters aren't fair. They're they're not properly introduced into what we're supposed to perceive them as, and we're left to make assumptions based on their or our, our known origins. Like he doesn't give them proper introductions or proper. Um, what do you, what would you call it? Like explanations of who these characters are and what they can do. Yep. On top of that, right? I think that's the issue. Like he's he's playing with both sides of the coin. That we have to assume these powers and assume these abilities without him having to say, "Oh, but the hard stop is here. Oh, he can't do that, or he can do that," with no real reasoning why. It they don't have to develop the powers in the movie, but they have to ex- kind of explain that. Okay, Flash can do everything and he's done this before. Or per- personally, not? I don't care if they develop the powers. I only care exactly. that they develop the characters. And I Cause, think because I feel like Superman is an underdeveloped character. They spent some time in BVS developing uh Batman for us trying to get to know him, but nowhere near say um that Harley Quinn movie, the what do you call it? The Birds of Prey, the emancipation mm. of one Harley Quinn. Um that was full ca- character development. The Joker Full character. De- mm-hmm. Now I have my gripes with the Joker, um, but generally speaking, we, we got to see those characters get a lot more 
development than Superman or Batman ever did. Wonder Woman gets some of it. That I mean, In I think we like that first yeah. Wonder Man, Wonder Woman movie, mm-hmm. the first one. Uh, yeah, uh, I actually have not seen the second one. You have not seen the second one. 1974? 84. 84. 84. 84. I have not seen it. Okay. Uh, have you seen the new one? Yeah. Yeah, you saw it, right? Um, I, I like it. I like the, the original movie. The second one, I have major issues with, although I enjoyed watching it. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched it, and I thought it was fun to watch, but I have major problems with it. Mm-hmm. And I, I do feel that way about this movie as well, is that I enjoyed watching it. A lot of people had to take breaks. We did not take breaks. We managed to watch the whole thing straight. Mm-hmm. There was a bit that I rewatched this morning um, on HBO Go because... I stepped away to make myself an espresso, but mm-hmm. that's it. I just had my back turned because like the espresso machine's over there, the TV's over there, so <laughs> you have to turn your back to make make the coffee. And and I missed a bit of that flash sequence, that original right. uh, flash intro sequence. So I rewatched it this morning just to get it again. Um, I think all these character development issues are not uh, no, are not Whedon's nor Zach's fault. I think it was a pressure on them. To make a Justice League movie, in order to catch up with the MCU. So that's the thing. Like, how would you rate Avengers? How do you guys feel about how Avengers played out as a movie in itself? I think any of them. Uh, the one thing, uh, the thing that I mentioned earlier wasn't about how good Avengers was as a movie indiv- individually, but about how uh, Justice League was rushed in order to catch up with the Avengers craze that was going on at that time. Uh, Avengers was built up to be a great movie because the previous characters except for Scarlet, except for uh, Black Widow and uh, Hawkeye were given enough screen time to develop their own characters, right? They had their own separate movies before Avengers came in. Mm -hmm. But Justice League, we only really got Batman and Superman. Yeah. Yeah, Wonder Woman came. Uh, Did the movie come after? Right? Yeah. Oh, Did okay. it? No, no, no Wonder yeah, Woman no. came first. Wonder Woman, it was Batman, uh, BVS. BVS, and Wonder then, Woman. Wasn't Wonder and then Woman Justice introduced League. in BBS? You no, know, she was introduced, she was introduced but she got BBS. her movie after. Yeah, and then, then she, she got her movie, yep. and then they had Justice League. Yeah. And then that's why there's all this setup for, a, for an Aquaman movie. Yep. Which mm. we do eventually get. Yep. yep. And then that was, that was what happened with uh, Justice League. It feels like. That movie was made in order for DC to level with Marvel, as opposed to actually developing their characters well first mm-hmm. before they made Justice League. So that's where I, that's I, where I believe the issue of the storytelling came up, because uh, Zack had to make do with what he currently has and execute it well. But I don't think Zack is that much good of a storyteller. Well. That's a tough one. You know what the strange thing is? Didn't Zack Snyder also did Watchmen, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. He also directed I was, Watchmen. I was going to ask, what other I good movies? I think Zack was that? a good visual storyteller, but in writing it, I think there's some issues. What else did Zack Snyder do? I'm trying to think. 300. 300. 300. There you go. Sucker so, Punch. Sucker Punch was his. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah. So, 300 and Watchmen arguably used their source material mm-hmm. as as storyboards mm-hmm. right like 300 is basically just the comic book mm-hmm. and that's why the dialogue is terrible mm-hmm. in 300 because it's just speech bubbles in the comic book right but visually it's everything that you expected watchmen was a, basically a shot for shot remake of the comic book with an exception of the ending you disagree uh- Yes, because <laughs> uh, they're kind. The characters in the Watchmen, the movie, feel like more watered down versions of that that in the comics. All right, I I, I can agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean the the comic, comics, you know, read at the pace of the reader. Yeah. Right. So how fast or how slow, how developed it is really is up to the reader. How long they spend on a page flip. Um, That said, and this is a tangent. Have you guys seen um, the Watchmen series? That's good. Oh my gosh, watched. Regina King! You haven't seen it? No. That's you, good. You've seen it? Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Like I, I actually think that that's one of the best pieces of TV. I mean, Regina King, 
especially if you consider like uh, One Night in Miami, her current uh, film that recently came out. If you haven't watched that movie, watched everybody should watch it, okay. especially in 2021. Um, very appropriate. It's about uh, Muhammad Ali and uh, and uh, Malcolm X and all these guys who basically on one night in Miami, it's actually happened. Mm-hmm. They uh, they spent a night together in a motel room just mm-hmm. talking about the world, yeah. right? Yeah. And the situation of... of African Americans and and the plight of African African Americans and it's so interesting to watch and Regina King directed that, um, and released it last year. So mm-hmm. this, I, if I understand correctly, was done in quarantine. Wow. Um, amazing picture. I I think that 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 should get all the awards. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's super amazing. And she's kind of having a moment in her in her mm-hmm. career right now. It's quite a year for Regina King. But that Watchmen movie. Uh, that Watchmen TV series, series, yeah, series so was we, amazing. So the thing with Watchmen is because most people probably didn't know who they were, mm-hmm. like majority of who were watching. Yeah, compared to Justice League, where in everyone has an understanding of the heroes. Mm-hmm. So Watchmen, yeah, yeah, people know if if I said Superman to yeah. anyone, they would know who yeah. he is. Even the Flash and even Cy- Cyborg to a degree, right? There's some level of understanding. Well, his name is Cyborg. Yeah, exactly, right. right? <laughs> But like Watchmen was good. Yeah. Like I would say, I would say the movie was the Watchmen movie scored higher than this movie than Zack Snyder's yeah. Justice League. I would probably rank it higher. Yeah. So it's hard to give a pass to Zack for not being able to storytell in a way that lets us understand the characters involved. Right? That's the, that's why I'm saying that was a bringing up Avengers. Avengers get a pass on not having to explain who these most of these characters are because they've had movies about them. So because these guys didn't, they should have been given proper introduction. No, Zach should have. Uh, the script should have uh, allowed for better storytelling. I know. Zach, it's di- a good visual. Shouldn't the director be able to tell <laughs> story writers like, look, we're not doing this well. I, I think that this movie should have been two movies. Like, I, it, I would it, agree. It's four hours long. Yeah. And it should have been... Two, two and a halfs? No, nah, no, not even. Maybe maybe just two, two. Mm-hmm. Right? Or cut or, it down to just a three and a half long movie. It's not It's not about the length, right? It's not about the length. It's no, how it, you it's direct how, the story. And how long you can... One of the things that I really found interesting about the treatment that they did here is that they did those different parts. I forget. Was it five parts? Six parts. Six, Six parts. plus an epilogue. Epilogue and the big intro yeah. sequence of Doomsday and Superman. Um, and Superman shouts and there echoes throughout time of his shout. That's That sound bit sounded really weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so a general comment is I think the background music or the background uh, audio for a lot of the scenes, on the, especially the added on scenes, were kind of weird. Well, this is a tough call um, and this gets us into a bit of the technical concerns with HBO Go is that we watch this mm. on HBO Go streaming um, we checked our bandwidth and everything, and we had bandwidth. We were even mm-hmm. on our on our devices and able to use our our other devices. But the quality of the stream was fluctuating heavily, and it took us over. It took us about fifty minutes just to hit play on mm. on the stream. Like it kept on get, the button kept on getting grayed out. It would start playing and or it would start beach balling or it would give us the HBO Go warning, and it just wouldn't play. And then throughout the movie, we saw massive drops in fidelity mm-hmm. in terms of the pixel quality, the yeah. pixel quality of mm-hmm. the show, uh, of the movie. So, you know, I think it's clear that HBO Go crashed during that mm-hmm. period. That's a good thing um, because a lot of Filipinos, <laughs> like the original Justice League, is quite is massively popular here versus in other countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of the reasons we celebrated it a lot at Pop Expo. In fact, the first Pop Expo, and this is kind of how I know the timing, is that the first Pop Expo, we actually did a Justice League tie-in with Honeycomb Arts where we did a gallery. Oh, that's right. Of Yeah, and Yoka made this Wonder Woman statue um, sculpture. And uh, yeah, that that's kind of what gives me a, a, a picture of what the timeline was like. And Filipinos really embraced that. And I thought that this multi-act structure was so Filipino. And I mean that in a good way. When you watch local films, like if you watch, um, the one that best comes to my mind is like um, Saving Sally, uh, oh. which is uh, directed by Avin and stars good friend of, of Honeycomb, uh, uh, Enzo. Uh, if you guys don't know Enzo's work, you should be following Buhay Basket on YouTube and on 
and on Instagram. They, they do great stuff uh, in the basketball realm. Um, and that movie is also using like this six, seven act structure um, of storytelling, which I've seen over and over in, in Filipino uh, productions. Only difference is that Zack Snyder has chosen to do it in four hours. Mm. So each of those arcs is... is uh, Pretty long. Yeah. yeah. So I think that in two movies, if they split that up into like three acts, three acts, it would be very palatable to an international audience, which is used to a three-act structure mm -hmm. where you would have, you know, search, search, some sort of... Uh, some sort of middle conflict. You could go to the entire first movie without needing Superman. I I, I can't remember. Was it Harry Potter that basically like did two parts to the end of the movie? I had two yeah, parts. Yeah, to, they, yeah. And, Hallows, yeah. And they, they, and Twilight. They stopped midway, what right? At the end of in Twilight. Twilight. <laughs> Twilight. In Twilight. So you watch all the. Done. But yeah, but Harry Potter stopped the first end of the movie basically in the middle of conflict, right? Uh, Infinity War. Infinity War ends, and then we get Endgame, and they actually put a nice big gap in the middle of Infinity War and Endgame, like yeah. that whole how many years? Five. Five. Yeah, the blip was five years, four years, five years. Yeah, something along those lines. Let's let's start to tie this up. Um, let's go to the bad guys mm -hmm. of the film, right? So uh, we have Steppenwolf and we have Darkseid. Mm -hmm. And I, I gotta say, Steppenwolf is being completely redesigned, right? Mm -hmm. um, or mostly redesigned. Mm -hmm. I think that that was just a visual uh, representation of a complete rewrite for the character. And this is why I say that this is not a true... Um, you know, the perception of the Snyder Cut is that once upon a time, Snyder made a movie... It got shelved. Joss Whedon took the movie, chopped it up, and made another film, right? But if anything, like the, we, certainly the dream sequence in this movie was reshot. Mm -hmm. That had to be reshot. That's new footage. Yeah, that's new. That's new. But um, a lot of it that was reshot, if you ask me, was Steppenwolf playing catch up to Thanos, right? Which was they made. Infinity War and Endgame, which which is the movie of Thanos, are the movies of Thanos, right? Mm -hmm. They are about him, and they bother developing his character. Steppenwolf, I think, before had no motivation. He was just some big bad guy who talked funny, and you know, like that's correct, right? And in this movie, they they made a point to make Steppenwolf have motivation instead of him just being some minion who's go do my bidding. my plea, yeah. my bidding. Um, they gave him motivation that he's some sort of reject, mm -hmm. right? They gave him a new character to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, in that the sod. The the what? The sod. The sod. Yeah. So all of that um, all of that uh, change all those changes that they made are done in post. Those yeah. are all CG scenes. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think that all of that is where the twenty to thirty million dollars that HBO, that Warner gave to Zach, Zack Snyder yeah. went, right? Maybe they spent like two million getting uh, Jared Leto and uh, and uh, Ben Affleck and all these people back in the same shot, right? Yeah. Or on the same green screen mm -hmm. at least. Um, where it's actually not clear if they're ever in the same place, right? Because that whole thing could have been uh, green screen. That is true. Yeah. So um, I, I think that all of those. Uh, like they, they, all of that money went to CG and Steppenwolf to get that back and yeah. to read and Steppenwolf yeah. and, and Dark yeah. Side. So they added in all of this um, character development for Steppenwolf, where you, he's a reject, he's trying to curry favor with his master, uh, and that gives motivation and it gives weight to the invasion to the entire story. Yeah, yeah. and I mm. think that that one act is a thing that really fixes the movie. Um, as a whole, like you get a lot more of him dealing with these cubes. I still hate the cubes. I think cubes are a stupid idea. Um, yeah, why do you think they keep on using these cubes? You got the Tesseract. You got the the the, the Transformers thing. What's that called? The Allspark. Allspark. The Allspark. Yeah, it's always a cube. 
It's always a cube. Come like to think of it, why is it always a why cube? Why is that a sphere? <laughs> well, I mean, Lord of the Rings, we have a ring, ring yeah. right? It's essentially the same thing. I mean, it's always everyone's, a thing. everyone's running yeah. around looking for a thing. Yeah. I still take issue with that idea of like they're running around trying to protect these boxes. Um, there's certain there's certainly better ways to protect the box. Like you have the fastest guy, um, he could mm-hmm. just put it somewhere, or Superman could just put it somewhere. You could sit on it. Batman could do something. <laughs> yeah, like See, I, I also find issue in how they stored all these mother boxes. Like the Atlanteans stored it somewhere safe down in the middle of the sea. They made a special shrine for it. So did the Amazonians. But why did the King of Men just bury that somewhere in the middle of the forest? I'm okay with that. That's a it's, it, it's somewhat, it's somewhat Lord of the Ringsian, mm. right? Whereas, yeah, we're just like, oh, we're gonna hide it with a Hobbit. Ah. Right? So we're gonna hide it with a, something with... obscure, unknown, and you know things people forget, and things that can change, right? I think that makes sense for humans <laughs> in general. I, I'm actually okay with that. With yeah. the with that they buried it, except mm-hmm. that when they bury it, there are like fifty of them there. Yeah. So there are fifty people who know where this thing is. That's a dumb idea. Oh uh, yeah. Um, but I actually don't like the way that the Amazons and and the Atlanteans kept it because they basically they basically put it in plain sight like it's on a pedestal yeah. here's where you steal it well right? to be like, fair to the Ant- about who would store gold bars that way if you had some gold bars here we have a room with a big circle in the middle why would we put the gold bars in the middle wouldn't we have a safe somewhere but it's well guarded well, to be fair to the atlanteans in particular actually both of them have reasoning right at least they're under the water like who can get there for the most part and then uh the mascara is hidden from man's view so boom theory, cube they basically okay. just get there by teleporting. Yeah, but they didn't. Exp- I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Who, did they know technology? <laughs> I mean, magic's magic, but you know. But to be fair, they, to they that, have spaceships, but they don't have guns. Yeah, I know. Right? They don't have lasers <laughs> in that in that uh, sequence. But to be fair to the Amazonians, like this is the thing I like with the added cut is that they sunk the entire monument into the water yeah, out of that nowhere. Was cool. That was really like, cool. out of nowhere. Like the old movie is like they just shut it off, and then I was commenting during the movie. Oh, there's a skylight. He can literally jump out. Of the skylight and get out of the thing. In the original movie, he just busted out, but like it's whatever. But this time, they drop the entire thing into the ocean and killing everyone that's inside, right? Supposedly, in theory, it should have killed everyone inside, but you know. I, I have a serious question. So after that point, they warn Diana by shooting the arrow across mm-hmm. um, the what the universe, not the universe, the, the ocean, uh, uh, whatever, Atlantic, Pacific, whatever. The magic. <laughs> Wall, whatever Greek, yeah, whatever Greek and it lands in what looks to be ancient Greece, uh-huh. right? Where shrine they have, of Athena, mm-hmm. the shrine of Athena, mm-hmm. yeah, where they uh, where Wonder Woman, where Diana then takes the arrow and it's a key and she goes mm-hmm. down into this uh, tomb, whatever, and discovers sees a picture of Dark Side, mm-hmm. right? How did Diana know that the arrow was there? Did I miss something? Yes, no, she the news report, yeah. She saw the she saw the pillar of fire. Yeah, on there the, was a on news, the news report about that shrine burning up. Yeah, she saw it on the news. She went there. She knows. She knows the history of why it would burn up or why it would. Okay, so, and she knows what the arrow does. So I, I, this I must have been making coffee at this point. Yeah, I think maybe. so. I must have been making coffee because I, I missed that, and I was like, "How did she know that the arrow to, was there to go over? The, yeah, yeah how did she know to go to the she arrow? Saw the fire. And, she saw the fire. And, she also uh, knows what the arrow's purpose. Remember, is. she's five thousand years old. <laughs> True, true. She. What do you mean she knows what the arrow is? Uh, she knows... Um, didn't her mother say that uh, yeah. she'll know? Like that. That's why they yeah. sent the arrow. Uh, she knows what it does. She knows what it's for. Okay. So, yeah. I, like, a lot of that stuff, I'm not... It's not clear to me if those are reshoots or if that no, was... No, no, no. That was in the original. That was except the, the except that she went to pick up the arrow and go underground. Mm-hmm. That was not in the original. Back to the Steppenwolf. <laughs> Steppenwolf, yeah. Why did Steppenwolf have puppy eyes? I that 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 was the weirdest part of Wait, Steppenwolf. Wait, explain eyes. that to me. He has this, he has this look in his eyes that, uh, when whenever he laments about his past or something, there's this very human, uh, he characteristic boy. with his eyes. He looks like a sad boy, yeah. But he always looks like he's about to cry whenever he's talking about mm-hmm. dark side. And, and I think that's okay. Adds, I, I know that it adds humanity to Steppenwolf, but it it feels uncanny to me to see those kinds of eyes on him. So I so I think that's a that's a that's a part that 
I mean, like what Kay was saying, like it gives him some emotional reasoning to be here. And weight. To do his, it yeah, gives, it gives him it gives weight. the character weight yeah. that it didn't have uh, at all before. Yeah, and like to be fair, mo- everyone on Dark Side Elite, Dark Side Elite, have issues. Like have actual emotional issues to why they're part of that thing. Well, that's the thing. Is that my understanding is that in this film, Dark Side didn't send him. He just went. He just there. went. There. He's, he's, he's trying going, to redeem himself. He's been yeah. going around trying to find. The anti-human, uh, anti-life, anti-life, uh, yeah. yeah, which was not mentioned in in the previous movie, was it? it? Was no. Nope. No. So that's an entirely new motivation that is not a cube that they're trying to find. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that scene also where like they whack the axe on the ground and the print comes out um, was it's a what's it called anti-life. Anti-life life equation. 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 Yeah. They're kind of putting the same context of anti-life equation into the mother boxes, which is not the case with the comics as well. The mother boxes are change machines, and they do possess ability to reconstitute, but that's sort of the point of the anti-life equation, wherein you can reset life to what you want using the anti-life equation. It's just that the mother boxes do it at one planet at a time, which, again, isn't the point of the mother boxes in the comics. So it's um, what you're saying is that the mother boxes are gems for a gauntlet. It's kind of, for me as a fan. It's, it's kind of confusing. It's just like someone who doesn't understand the source material too much, and then just trying to take out pieces and put it together, right? So I don't know. Like anything. With, so here's another advantage that Avengers have is that they pro- they they introduce Thanos early on without context, right? They just show his face at some point. And that allows people to understand and search up about Thanos so that when they introduce him formally, there is some inkling of understanding versus Darkseid just shows up right now and like, okay, you're supposed to be a all-universal conqueror, but you couldn't conquer Earth. Okay? <laughs> well, that's why they had that extended scene with the Amazons stuff yeah, fighting him, right? Yeah, that's that's fine. But like again, it's like it's it's in the same movie. There's no time to digest that Darkseid is here to kill everyone again. And this is why I'm saying it should have been two movies. I agree. Like we needed, we needed to set stakes so that we could just have one movie that was all just action craziness. Because like Endgame works because it's a heist. Mm-hmm. I would actually argue that um, Infinity War is more um, of a final battle than mm, Endgame is. That is fair. Right? Because the battle itself is more of the movie. The stakes were higher in Infinity War than in Endgame. I do think that people should watch this movie. Mm-hmm. I think that people will enjoy this movie. I think it is 100% worth the 150 pesos it costs to, to get HBO Go. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, HBO everyone should have HBO Go. Um, again, grain of salt with my disclosures, right? But... Uh, in general, like I, I feel like the HBO Go catalog is just so full of great uh, content. We don't have HBO Max in the Philippines, um, but we do get some of the material, right? Like Love Life, uh, the Aunt, uh, what's her name? Anyway, so like you get some of the, the well, Watchmen, uh, movies or uh, TV shows and stuff that that you would get on HBO Max or being produced for HBO Max. Um, particularly Justice League, we're really seeing it translate into HBO go here in the Philippines. And if anything, um, I think that this server going down, you know, the crash for Justice League really shows that HBO Max should have yeah. more of a presence here. Um, or just like load that stuff into HBO Go, mm-hmm. right? Load that stuff into HBO Go and, uh, and that thing can and will be a hit in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. That's one of my takeaways from, from the viewing experience. Yeah. For the movie itself, I enjoyed watching the movie. I don't think a lot of people can do the straight four hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, you will enjoy it. Um, but again, I'm the kind of person who, like, I, you know, there are people who love The Matrix and hate the sequels. Mm-hmm. And I love all of them. Because the first time I watched them, I watched them back to back to back. I actually didn't see those in the theater. Like, there are a lot of people who hate the third X-Men. Last Stand? Last Stand. Wait, the, the recent one or the original back in the early 2000s? Early 2000s. I love that one. I think, I think a lot of people like, like the first two. 
I think X2, so a lot of people saw X2 as the mm. peak and then were disappointed by the third one. Really? Um, me, I like the third one a lot because I watched it right after watching the other two. And I think that that experience of like loading all of the emotions, uh, by the time you get to the end, like that was one of the issues is that like in that last X-Men movie in The Last Stand, um, I should probably see, stop saying the last. It's been like 10 years since it was the last X-Men movie. But uh, because I watched it in that way, I felt that all of the emotions were loaded onto Jean Grey, mm -hmm. onto Phoenix, in a way that um, that people who just walked in and watched just that movie didn't Would not get. understand, yeah. Right? And I do think that a lot of the character development that happens in Zack Snyder's Justice League... Um, would just not be there if if you didn't watch it straight. Like, you have to watch it maybe in successive days or something mm. to really enjoy this thing. But my advice is I think you should watch the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Crazy thing, though, is if you press a little download button on HBO Go, they only give you 48 hours to watch the movie. So stream it. Like, stream it stream it uh, in real time is, is my advice. Um, yeah. Do I think that the, my issues with the original movie were answered? Yes or no? Um, yes, except for Superman. Hmm. I still have exceptional Superman. And that final scene, the dream sequence where Batman, just so we're all on the same page, there's a dream sequence where Batman uh, sees the future. Actually, we're not sure if it's a dream sequence or if it's just like a something that you know we Will are happen, seeing yeah. the future. Mm -hmm. And then the next scene, Batman wakes up. But it is not him actually having that dream, mm -hmm. right? I'm not sure, but we basically see this scene that happens way in the future where, where, where Superman is the big bad. Mm -hmm. We essentially see Superman be the evil of the world, and Lois Lane is the key. And I guess the implication is that like there's no more Lois Lane. Yep. Um, or that's my read on the situation. Lois died. Superman went evil. Yeah. Yeah, which is um, the Injustice. story arc of Injustice. Mm. Yeah, that's just more evil Superman. And I'm personally, I'm just so sick of seeing murder Superman. Mass murder Superman who's just willing to kill people, willing to, like, it's like, okay, we're going to kill Zod because, you know, it, he's a, they're both adults, you know, and all the people are children, but adults can act like adults among adults. Um, and I didn't like that as much as I thoroughly enjoyed the R18 rating on this current film. Mm. Like, there are moments where I'm like, oh my God. Like, he just threw that guy across the beach and smashes his, smash his, his spine head. on a... And there's blood all over that rock, yeah. right? Or Aquaman, who's like a good guy, um, throws his, his trident through two baddies and nails them to the wall. Mm. There's a lot of that. Wasn't that in the original? Like Steppenwolf slicing people in half. Like the Amazons and <laughs> smashing. Does it, the, yeah. Like, yeah. was that not in the first one? I don't think that was the, in the first one. Uh, I think I, there was no blood in the first one. And I think that they also did a good job of not having Batman just being, like, interference. Like, in the in the first one, I really took exception with that. But, like, in the big final battle, Batman's just, like, relegated to, like, shooting baddies on the from yeah. the sidelines. Mm -hmm. right? He's standing on a wall and just... Pew, 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 pew. Um, and there's no consequence to what he's doing, whereas in this version, there is a lot of consequence to the things that Batman does. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish that there was more, mm -hmm. but you know, it is what it is. There's a scene, I don't remember if it was in the first one, where all the characters sync up with the Batmobile. Was that in the Joss yeah, Whedon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was? That was. That was in the Joss Whedon yeah. at the end of the... They the came Batman. to save Batman and then charge into the tower, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I still don't like that. I don't like the amount of Batman saving that needs to happen in this movie. Like, Batman don't need to be saved, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so those are my general thoughts. I like the movie. Uh, you know, it's like a seven. Mm -hmm. I think I would watch it again, despite it being so long. Um, and I think that that is saying a lot. I was expecting garbage, to be mm -hmm. honest. Like, the first one, I didn't like the first time I saw it. Um, the second time they had that director's cut and I didn't even bother with that mm -hmm. to be honest I didn't watch it because I was like oh it's this more of the same thing and they're like no 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 but it answers some of the questions I'm like but is it more of the same thing and they're like yes I'm not watching it so those who feel that way 
should watch. Should watch this movie. Yeah. No, I think it's. A, I agree with most of what you said. It is a better version of what we originally got. Uh, it does leave a lot hanging for a lot of longtime comic fans, and even those who understand Superman as who he is. Like, and also coming last thing is coming from a story point, storytelling point of view. It's so boring. I would say the development of the characters are in this movie or in overall, like. Like again, I I don't mind. So th- the thing is that they are moving. Wait, 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 wait. So you find that this four-hour thing has still has the problem of boring character development. Yeah, especially for Superman in particular, right? Batman's fine. Wonder Woman's fine. Uh, really, Wonder Woman? No, Wonder, I mean Wonder she Woman doesn't need to. Wonder Woman. Okay, so this is something. That's something I really like here is that they they expanded out the the team building aspect, mm-hmm. not the team building, like the assembly. Finding, of the yeah, team, yeah, yeah. Right, we're using that assembly assemble word. Um, where in the previous in the Joss Whedon version, yeah, they it's basically Wonder Woman doing Google searches on the back computer mm-hmm. and watching files about these guys, yeah. right? Um, whereas here you actually have them go out and meet and. There's some... Wasn't that in the original as well? No, what? Like, them meeting each of them. Uh, like but They do, but it, but basically they... Re- well, the, the cyborg one was much better. The she's cyborg interaction was here. a lot better. Yeah, it's way more hands-on in this yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Like, you really Again, see her... But that's not really character development. I mean, it's just... it's just That's just storytelling for me. More than anything, right? Yeah, and this is what I'm saying. Like, like Wonder Woman still has that problem of... She's she's the adult in the room trying to explain yeah, things yeah. to young boys, yeah. right? Um, I didn't get to talk too much about Flash. That's that's mm-hmm. another thing that I I do I did really enjoy Flash. I mm-hmm. do like Ezra Miller's Flash. Mm-hmm. I do not think that he is the Barry Allen we know. Mm. He is his own character and arguably a different iteration of the Flash. I don't mind. Like I like I think that if they just change his name and he was. Essentially, um, like Kid Flash from Legionnaires, that yeah. era of Flash, I would have, I, I would have liked it because personality-wise, I think he's more of that character. Um, as someone who runs or as who, who who understands running, having been a runner in my life, um, he kind of flails around and he doesn't really look like he's a runner, and I like that. Yeah, about this, like he does this swinging his arms like this kind of thing uh, and I thought that that brought character and it presented him not as an athlete but as just this guy who has the ability not because he's trained mm-hmm. but because he's been stuck with it mm-hmm. it's almost a curse and um, and yeah I'd, I'd like to see that fleshed out a lot more if anything despite all of despite some of my gripes about the movie, I walked into it uh, wanting to support Zack Snyder and his vision. Uh, Because behind the scenes, I know that Zack himself is a great guy. He has integrity. I wanted to support that vision of his. And um, just seeing his uh, vision on screen, being able for him to uh, express what he wanted, I think it was a great one. It's great for me already. Even though I think that it's a 7 to 8 movie, uh, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, uh, I think that it's still worth watching. Especially for those who think that uh, Justice League was terrible and there's no more saving it. I think they will be proven wrong once they see Zack Snyder's Justice League. So just for, because this is the first time that like people are hearing us talk about the stuff that we watched for you guys, what would you consider? What movie, superhero or not superhero, uh, or maybe one superhero and one not superhero, what would you consider a 10? You go first, yeah. Ralph. Okay. I'm so bad at this because it's hard to... Uh... All right, I'll go first. So you go. I'll go first. Um, I think that Winter Soldier is a 10. I ah, really like good that. Good choice. Yeah, I think that good Winter choice. Soldier is a 10. Um, for superhero movies, for non-superhero movies, um, Inception. Like, Inception is a 10 for me. Pass. <laughs> One sec. I can't think of anything right I now. I already have a superhero movie okay, in mind. Okay, go. Go. My 10 would be Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I'm trying to remember. And that's another great example I, of DC being good with animated stuff. 
Yeah, it is. Um, I think that if you're going to watch um, Batman DC stuff, that one, Batman Ninja, which is not so much storytelling so much as eye candy, mm -hmm. and um, Under the Red Hood. Mm. Yep. Like for me, Under the Red Hood, um, its only problem is that people feel like it's a cartoon. Like there are so many people who should watch this thing who won't watch it because they think it's just a cartoon. Mm. But really, that film is like, for me, might be the best Batman <laughs> film I've ever seen. Under the Red Hood. Under the Red yeah. Hood. Even like better than what Batman Begins. Mm. Um, what is it? Batman, uh, The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. Yeah. As much as I love those films so much. You still don't have anything? Yeah. Uh, well, superhero movie, I guess, to qualify is Rogue One. I would treat as a 10. Really, you you you're saying that uh, Rogue One is a superhero movie? <laughs> I, I, it, well, it's a hero. Movie. I, I don't know. Like just to, just because they don't have, well, the Force is a power. I don't know. But anyway, I I it's, so, it, it's so a, maybe it's a magic like the Force like the I guess. Wizards. But either but way, you don't even really have. Yeah, that's. I mean, hmm. I'm that's having a cheating. hard time of thinking of like. All right, what's your highest or... ranked superhero movie, and what is what's the best superhero movie for you, and how would you rank it um, on a scale of one to ten? Speaking of Mask of the Phantasm, what made it a 10 for me was it showed the detective side of Batman really well. Yeah. You know what? I have not seen that in a few years. Yeah. But I do have a way to watch it. We should watch it. Yeah. You know who really loves that? Pow. We should get Pow over here and we should do a T-dubs about Mask of the Phantasm. I'm, I'm done with that. All yeah. right. Anima well, it's animated again, superhero movie. Uh, Flash. Flashpoint. 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 Okay, I actually Such haven't watched the Flashpoint yeah. cartoon. So like like again, I'm a, I'm a big Flash fan and then it it hits a lot of great storytelling and because it's animated, it gets away with a lot of usage of powers and stuff like that. Uh but it you treat it really as like a R-rated movie because everyone dies. <laughs> And wow. it's uh, <laughs> That's spoilers for Flashpoint. No, but it's Flashpoint. It doesn't matter because everything gets retconned. Non-superhero movie. Well, if Rogue One is a superhero movie, they'll go with Rogue One. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. So Rogue One is a 10. Yeah. Yeah, really? So like you, Rogue One is like the apex for you. In terms of, I, I think, so that's the thing, right? Like there, there are ways to score 10 differently. There's like storytelling, there's action, there's visuals and stuff like that. And for me, in a storytelling point of view, in, in a way that you can watch it alone with as little context as possible, I think Rogue One is great in how they deliver their story even if you don't know the Star Wars universe. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah. But I completely disagree with the idea that like there are many ways to rate. But no, that's no, me. That, that, no, this, so is me. this is me. Someone has to win. Someone has no, to someone, win yeah, but, Best Picture. Yeah, but even in Best Picture, you rate them across different things and which one averages out the best wins, right? Yeah, it's everything. It's all, exactly, thing, all exactly. things considered. Yeah, so, so all things considered, what's number one? I can't, I don't have one in top of mind right now. That's why I think I'll Ralph come back to it another, that, I'll come back to it. I think Ralph was saying that in terms of storytelling, Rogue yeah, One right, is right now, it's the easiest for me to And like, I talk agree about. with him, Star uh, Rogue One is my best Star Wars movie too. I, ooh, ooh. Not, no, I, 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 not yours. No, no. I know it's not so, yours. So, Empire Strikes so, Back. But that's the thing, though. Empire so that's Strikes the thing, back. right? Is that sometimes, even if it's not talking about storytelling, oh. you feel like that that's the better movie. Mm. But it's not a 10, necessarily. Yeah. Mm. Right? So that's what I'm saying as well. Like, Rogue One for me is a 10 in terms of storytelling. It might not be the best Star Wars movie for me, but it's still judging it is a 10. I think Star Wars. Because there's emotion involved. I, I, yeah, I think mm. it's always not. Like, for me, I always tell people, like, I will I will watch and enjoy any Star Wars movie independent of whether or not it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, I don't feel that way about about the Justice League. Exactly. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. Like, I have expectations and I have things that I would like to be met. I don't think that I should always be pandered to, mm -hmm. frankly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do feel like there is more of a burden because of what those properties um, mean culturally they don't have the same um, cultural significance as something like a Star Wars because Star Wars is like pervasive you know like it's not well it depends I mean like comics were a thing for a lot of people especially back in the day right 
Yeah, but it really yeah. depends on how you grew up or what. I mean, that's the point of judging, right? It bases off your experience as well. But w- would you say that that the characters in the Justice League are as universal as the well Superman is? Maybe, but let's say Cyborg. No, not as much. It's a it's a coming of age thing, I guess, for a lot so of people. I, yeah, but that's the thing. It's like if I put but Cyborg, Star Wars is that's fair. That's if fair. I put Cyborg okay, yeah. up against like C three PO. Right, like mm-hmm. C three PO is a is not the same character. I'm not saying because they're shiny. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not being like not being robot <laughs> racist. Um, what I'm saying is that like you can take like a bit part from Star Wars, and pe- the way people feel about that character is so emotional. That's fair. Versus what's essentially a main role in this movie. Mm. Let's like, get to it another time, but that's also a bit of stereotyping, I think. And the the characters in Star Wars are a bit flatter. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. And again, we'll get that. <laughs> no one should trust anything I say about Star Wars <laughs> because I'm just so like that movie represents freedom to yeah. me, like 100. And uh, yeah, that's a good topic for another day. Mm-hmm. My non superhero movie go for a ten is either Casablanca or Drive. Drive. Ooh. Casablanca. That's a really I good like choice. Drive. Drive is also a really yeah, good yeah. choice. Yeah. Casablanca uh, used whatever technology they have back then in order to tell a very sensitive topic, to tackle a very sensitive topic well on screen. And also inspired all of those that were affected by the war during that time. It I think, was good. I think it also has to do with like the goals of what a picture is trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like for me, one of my favorite movies of all time is Roman Holiday. Mm. It's such a basic movie of just like these people running around the town. It's essentially a, a tourism video. But the goals of the film were just to show um, a Roman holiday. A Roman holiday and them having fun, mm. right? And them achieving conviction. And it achieves all of those goals, even though it's very simple, mm. right? Um, and ultimately that is that is, that brings us back to justice league is that the goals of justice league were always going to be impossible yeah and the truth is we are never going to see what snyder originally envisioned we're getting something close right but what we're actually getting is something that happened something that's been informed by everything that's happened in the last 4 years mm. informed by the public how people responded to it, informed by um, by pub, by current events, mm-hmm. even right, um, and yeah, uh, you even see that in in Age of Ultron. Like Age of Ultron, they make it very specific that like, oh, the characters before they fight the big bad, they're gonna have an evacuation sequence because all the good guys can't get killed like they were in. Uh, all of the regular people can't get killed the way mm-hmm. they were in Man of Steel mm-hmm. right because people saw that like honestly I saw Man of Steel and the emotional trigger for me of seeing buildings fall like I was like I remember watching 9-11 like I remember that I watched I heard someone told me that a plane had flown into the first tower and then I started watching Fox News I was very into Fox News at the time <laughs> <laughs> and I started watching Fox News and uh, and I watched that second plane hit uh, and that never sat well with me with Man of Steel and maybe that's one of the reasons again emotionally why why murder Superman <laughs> doesn't really resonate with me alright with that I do want to thank you guys for watching uh, you guys want to say goodbye Peter bye and Ralph <laughs> See ya. (laughs) And I'm KO. Uh, If you enjoy this, let us know. Uh, We're going to do it whether or not you guys want to watch. So so we're going to, if you, if you do enjoy, put it, uh, watch on YouTube or uh, maybe we'll put this up on our, on our podcast feed and people can listen to it as well because it's pretty long. Um, And uh, do follow along on Instagram. We are at Honeycomb Manila on Instagram. You can follow me. I'm at KO Kosha on Instagram. Peter? I'm at Hunter Park. I think we'll put the spelling here somewhere in the screen. And uh, Ralph? Uh, At Ralph Benediclao. Yeah, and if you want to know anything about archery attack, you can also follow. All right, thank you guys for watching. Again, my name is K.O. Kosha. This is Honeycomb Manila. And uh, this has been uh, Things That We Watched or uh, T-Dubs. Do we like the name, Peter? Are we in the name? We can work it out. We can work on it. (laughs) 
but for now, nickname things we watched, uh, yeah. and uh, maybe we can uh, do some other ones uh, coming up, whether it be documentaries, documentaries, and uh, some informative videos, actually. Yeah, like sometimes just like watching a bunch of stuff on YouTube is really helpful, right? Yep. What if we try try not to laugh stream? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we can even watch stuff that are not good. <laughs> yeah. Right? And maybe things with, with less cultural significance. Mm. Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah, so we should definitely do Mask of the Phantasm. Mm. All right, so that's a wrap. Coming to you from Honeycomb Manila in Pasay City, the Philippines. I'm Keo. Wish you guys good luck, good health. Peace.